What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. All you new subscribers, I'm Barbas. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install a D16Y7 intake manifold into a D16Y8 engine. I'm also gonna show you the two different ways how people install these. Um, I'm also gonna cover how to install a D16Y8 engine into a 96 through 98 shell. So basically your wire harness is going to be a little bit different from the 99 and 2000 EX. Even though it's the same engine, one's VTEC, one's non-VTEC, the engine harness is different. So that's what we're gonna be covering, how to do that. So if you have a D16Y7, this is what your intake manifold should look like. It looks like if it was like a little carburetor, but it's actually a throttle body. So a lot of people like to take this throttle body and pull it off of this D16Y7 because it's the simplest when you're dealing with the IAC valve, which is this right here. On the D16Y8 manifold, you have the IAC in the back of the intake manifold. So if you're gonna keep that one, you're gonna be forced to cut the wire in the back and go from three wire to two wire, which I will cover in a few minutes. Um, also, you are forced to block off on the Y8 manifold the old IAC valve. So it might just be easier and simpler to just go ahead and go with the D16Y8 IAC valve and just cut the wire and splice in the new connector than to take this whole throttle body off and then you gotta deal with taking this thing off also. You gotta swap this out because this is going in the reverse in the, re the reverse way all your plugs are pretty much going to be the same except for the IAC valve the only difference is that you're going to have to extend some of the wires um, by extend you could either extend them or you could go ahead and cut into the wire harness therefore on looming it and making it longer that way which would probably be the easiest way this right here is your Y8 intake manifold as you can see the IAC valve is in the back located back here it still has both of the lines that go right here which is kind of like the lines that are sitting on that little carburetor throttle body that I showed you guys that's why I'm saying that it's easier just to cut the wire and make the new connection for here than to make a plate to block this off, grab the throttle body and slap it on here. So the way how I'm going to be doing this is I am going to keep that there, the IAC valve, right where it is. We're going to be using everything exactly how it is. The only difference 
is that we are actually going to go down here and we are going to cover the injection ports which is this guy right here there's a hole here a hole here here and up here i had covered them before because i had done this before so you can see that there's still jb weld in there that's a few years old this one over here looks like it started to come off and this one i believe that the little plug of of jb weld might have fallen off but i'm not sure um i didn't see it on the head or anything so i'm hoping it just fell off to the floor when i was taking this apart but either way we are going to take some jb weld and we are going to cover these little ports all over again so we're going to cover this little hole this little hole this one this one this one i'm actually going to take something and cut this guy off and we are going to clog it up with more jb weld in there the reason why you want to get rid of these is because those are your injection ports when you first start up your car on a cold start and of course the d16y7 does not have that so let's go ahead and remove that how do you know if you have that i'm going to show you guys right now let me rephrase that how do you know if you have a system that works with this well i'm going to show you guys right now so if you have this system it will be sticking out of here if you have a 99 or 2000 ex it will be sticking right out of here it looks like a black piece it's gonna come up this way it's gonna swirl around and plug right into here this piece of the intake manifold let me see if i can find a picture on my phone so i can show you guys what that piece looks like so this is what the thermostat looks like and if you guys see this black piece that runs up like this that's what controls your injection so it sends air into those little holes so if you don't cover those up you will have a really bad air leak in the system and that's something that you do not want so here's a better picture you can see the little nipple that comes up right there and basically it just comes up and plugs right into here like that and it runs to the intake manifold just how i showed you and that's why it's really important for you guys to block this off and block all these off we are going to be using jb weld last time i used this was about two years two years and a half something like that and it worked perfect so we're gonna go ahead and do it again before we do all that let me show you my wire harness this side is my d16 y7 wire harness i went ahead i pulled it off the car and i labeled everything everything is very nicely labeled that over there that you guys see on this side on my left side is my D16 Y8 wire harness and it looks like that because I went ahead and I pulled out some plugs that I am gonna need for my D16 Y7 and you guys are probably asking well it's the same car it's the same it should be the same thing why are you taking that one apart well that one is from a 99 and 2000 this wire harness is from a 96 to 98 civic what's the difference i'm going to show you guys right now besides besides not having vtec and all that stuff let me show you what the main difference is so here you go the 96 to 98 wire harness with ecu is an obd2 a you have your plugs to plug it in it takes three plugs these are built into the wire harness itself 
if you look right here, the first one has pins, the second one does not, and the last two have pins, which they will all plug in, right? The OBD2B D16Y8 for the 99 and 2000 Honda Civic. The first one has pins, the second one has pins, the third one has pins, but now the third, the fourth one does not have pins in there. This is an empty slot. Therefore, if you were trying to swap this into that over there, into this computer, or you were swapping that harness into that computer, you wouldn't be able to plug it in. You would, but you're gonna get to this plug or to the second plug on that side that does not have the pins in there. If you grab the wire harness from the 99 and 2000, there's only two plugs. The third plug is not built into the wire harness itself, but it's built into the wire harness that runs through the dash on the Civic. So that's the reason why we have two plugs here instead of three like that wire harness. So therefore, if we swap our D16 Y8 into the 96 Civic, we would be forced to get an ECU that's either OBD2A, that's VTAC, or we would be forced to get a jumper harness that would plug into this right here, plug into this, and then it would convert this, this end to OBD1, which then you would run a chipped computer. What I am gonna do is I actually have a VTEC ECU right here. This VTEC ECU is OBD2A. So it's the exact same thing as this, except this one's VTEC, this one's non VTEC. And they're both, all three of these are actually manual. So if you guys go to the junkyard, and try to get an ECU or anything. Make sure it's stick shift if your car is stick shift and make sure that it has the VTEC if that's what you're trying to run. Otherwise, you'll get everything plugged in and we won't have VTEC unless if we have the ECU to control it. These are the wires with the plugs that I pulled from my D16 Y8 wire harness. You're gonna need your plugs for your IAC valve to convert it from three to two. You're gonna need your VTEC plug for the solenoid. You're gonna need your other VTEC plug and you're gonna need a knock sensor because I believe the Y16, Y7 does not have a knock sensor. This might be a boring video because I'm explaining all this, but for somebody that needs this information, it's very informative to know all this. So this is a D16A for those of you that don't know. It's a JDM engine and when I first bought this engine, it did not come with the crankshaft precision sensor. That sensor goes right on the other side of the timing cover, right where the pulley is for the crankshaft on the back side of it. The wire, it comes off the wire harness and then it goes like a straight shot straight down right here, all the way down to where the pulley is. So like I said, I had to fool the computer into getting a fake signal. Therefore, my check engine light wouldn't turn on. We are going to have to do the same thing to this one. Because when I rebuilt this engine for boost, I had the option of installing one because the, the hole is there. But I decided not to because of the fact that 
I had fooled the computer before. So I'm going to fool the computer again and I will also show that process on how to do that. If you need this information for a 99 and 2000 because the, the way how you do it is different for a 96 and 98. But if you need this information for a 99 and 2000, you could go back through my videos and I have a video where it says D16A swap information. In that video, I show you exactly what wires you have to cut and splice together in order to fool the ECU into thinking that you have that sensor down there. You are gonna need an intake manifold gasket, a fresh one. Um, I had this one here before, and I bought this one today. And this one's a little bit different. You can see, obviously, it's a little bit different because it has these chambers up here for the ports for the injection, for the air injection, which we do not need anymore. So either one of these two gaskets will work correctly. This one, I have the part number here if anybody needs it. MS91553. This one has a part number in the back, NI-209-5. I am going to be using this one because this one's a little bit thicker material than this. Also, with my gasket, I always like to use some of this stuff. This stuff makes your gasket nice and tacky, therefore creating a really good seal. Especially when it comes to the intake manifold, you want to make sure that you have a good seal because of the fact that if you have a little air leak, then your engine is not going to run correctly. It's going to be sucking air from the atmosphere without it going through the throttle body and your, your sensors aren't going to read right also. So we're going to be using this. This is kind of low and I could not find any more of those at the store today when I was there. So I ended up getting some copper spray. You guys are probably wondering why is he going to use copper spray on an intake manifold? Well, for the same reason, it leaves it nice and tacky and I know that this stuff will leave your gasket tacky for about two or three days. Even after, after the flash time that you let it sit there, it stays nice and tacky. Therefore, I know that it's going to make a great seal if I use this stuff. You want to make sure that when you put this gasket on, that you use the correct torque sequence. Because if you don't use it, it's also going to create a really bad leak. I got some electrical tape. Some of these to cut wiring i got this because i'm going to be using this when we fool the computer when we fool the ecu this is going to be the easy way to just take one of these little clips and just splice right into the system without cutting or anything and of course this but it looks like i'm out i only have like two or three in there these are always great to have in hand just in case if we need them I am trying to do this as detailed as possible because of the fact that there's nothing worse than having a bad wire harness this is something very important this is something that you want to do correctly the first time you don't want to have mistakes so with that being said and everything that I've shown you Let's go ahead and get started and get this process done. I forgot to mention that I am going to be swapping out my distributor and I'm going to be using the distributor for the OBD2A because this engine 
since it was in a 99 to 2000 shell the distributor was OBD2B the pins are completely different and the easiest method for me right now since I have a different distributor for the OBD2A is sitting there I'm just gonna go ahead and swap it out you don't have to do this process if all you're doing is swapping out your Y7 to Y8 intake manifold. This is only for somebody that's swapping the engine out and they're gonna use a different wire harness. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and block these off. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy off. You could either cap it or figure a way to put something on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a grinder. I'm gonna take that off, make it smooth. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with this JB Weld. And there you go. I'm going to go ahead, mix my JB Weld stick and get this clogged up this and then get these four little ports clogged up also so there it is i went ahead and i started out through this side i pushed it in until it came out through the top and then i took my razor blade and cleaned off this side and i smeared this like that and then over here i went ahead and i put a little dot wherever it needed it and took the razor blade and cleaned it all off so we got this pretty much covered now so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our d16a wire harness that's completely labeled all the way up and down and we are gonna put it back into the civic i have not really modified anything on it i did clean all the little clips and I took off the plastic piece that went right here that goes behind the valve cover or behind the engine block. It's like a big giant plastic piece. I actually have it still on this one, on the Y8. See, I took off this whole thing and I took all these little clips off that went all over the place. And the reason being is that I want to try to clean this up after it's in the engine compartment. After it's completely wired to where it goes, I'm going to unwire it and try to hide as many wires as I can. So I'm going to attempt to clip as many things as I can without the intake manifold. So I got the wire harness pretty much plugged in. Um, I don't have this right here. This is where the fuse box sits so these are not plugged in distributor is not plugged in but i do have everything else underneath plugged in i don't have an oxygen sensor plugged in um vtech this we will take care of after we check everything so we'll add wires to vtech and to the knock sensor which is right here once we have everything established um, or actually the knock sensor I can just plug that in and just leave the wire hanging over here because I know that that knock sensor is a pain to get under there to like go under because of the intake manifold so we'll go ahead and plug that one in and just leave the wire like I said just hanging over here and then we'll send it to the ECU um, I have two more wires down here that are not plugged in one's for the crankshaft position sensor and then the other one is for another oxygen sensor, I believe. I have the alternator plugged in. And I have the main plug in the corner plugged in. And everything that's left right here, from here on up, is all wires that go to the intake manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and mock up the intake manifold. I'm not gonna put it with a gasket or anything. I'm just gonna mock it up so we could throw all these wires all around and see how they fit. 
once we know that everything fits nicely and we go ahead and we turn that three wire IAC to a two wire then we'll go back take off the intake manifold make everything nice and pretty with some electrical tape and then we'll go ahead and install the the intake manifold correctly so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that intake on there just to see how it looks okay I'm trying to do my best at recording this but this guy is loose on here as you guys can see and remember one of those things that I told you that I might have forgotten well one of the things is the throttle cable I'm gonna be using the Y8 throttle cable because it is a lot shorter you could probably get away with using the Y7 it is a lot longer and it does have a little bit more slack but it could be modified and it could definitely be used if you don't have the budget to buy a Y8 one all right so we're gonna attempt to plug some of these things in this one goes here fuel line I do have a really long fuel line this is the fuel line it's really long because I got a new hose for it I'm not gonna cut it here and install it here I'm actually gonna go underneath the intake manifold and loop it onto here that way I could get rid of this ugly wire completely and it will just be looped from here on down and around which will be a lot better but for now I'm gonna go ahead and just put it here so we can have sort of an idea then let me see this one will go here this this wire or this hose is actually going to go to the back back here and it's going to go to the IAC valve Everything's looking pretty nice. This will go from here to here. All right, so everything's looking pretty nice. Let's check out the wiring. This one's actually gonna go over here. This is for the EVAP. This wire that's right here is gonna go to this. This is to the IAC, which we have to modify still. We got injectors, wires. And I think we're gonna have to cut this loom open. See if we can send these injector wires across. And also this EVAP. So I got everything pretty much plugged in. I got my map sensor up here, throttle position sensor over here. My injector still got to be plugged in. I got to release a little bit of the loom down there so then I can loop them around. I did replace this hose and I did move this piece that was here and I actually plugged it back here. This is the little EVAP that was here, the little sensor. Um, I pretty much moved it over there and I had this braided line you're sitting around and I decided to use it to loop it around so then I could hide the EVAP sensor back there I'm gonna do the same thing with this hose I'm gonna replace it with a braided hose so it could go down and 
remove this line and send this around so I could eliminate this ugliness right here. Um, I'm gonna show you guys right now what to do with the IAC plug. All right, so for the IAC plug, you guys already know that this is a different one that I had. This one's the one from the Y8. And on here, we have three, this one has two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna depin this. We're not gonna be using the orange one. We're only gonna use the blue and black and yellow and black. And we are gonna be wiring it to this right here, to this pigtail. And the way how we're gonna be wiring this is this black and gray one will now actually be our blue and black and this green one will now be our yellow one yellow and black so i'm gonna go ahead and remove that little blue clip it's got a little piece at the bottom you just flip it up like that and then you could pull the pins out i am gonna need like something to pry it with just a little bit and then the pins should pop right out so I have my IAC valve right here. It's ready to be connected. And this is the orange wire. I just went ahead and I put a little connector at the end. So I won't have any problems later on. And the only thing that I have to do now is just loosen these injector wires from underneath so they can have more slack to fully run under and closer. Because right now, it wants me to run it over the top like this, which I don't want. I want to come in through the side. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this one last time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and release these wires. And I'm going to tape all of this nicely so it looks pretty decent. And remove this hose and replace it with the braided one. I almost got everything plugged in. Um, for the injector wires brown red blue yellow that's how you're gonna plug them in they all have different colors and that's how I'm gonna plug them in I did run my wire harness a little bit different I ran it through the same wire the same hole where the line for the P PVC is, is at right through here I'm trying to make this as clean as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and after I plug them in, pull them back in there. Everything's pretty much hooked up. All my injectors are wired in. I got my reservoir for my power steering right here. This is for uh, power steering delete. Also, if you're interested in that video, go down below, scroll through my videos and you'll find that. We gotta put some power steering fluid in there. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and continue this video tomorrow, which will actually be like in two or three seconds for you guys, because I am pretty tired and I got other things to do. So I'll see you guys in three seconds. We are at day number two now. Um, let's go ahead and do a quick little rerun and go through everything that we did before we continue on. Um, I also wanna show you guys the throttle cable. This right here is the throttle cable for the D16 Y7. You guys can see how long it is. This right here is the throttle cable for the D16 Y8. It's a lot shorter. And this one as you guys can see there's about a foot and a half maybe two feet so this one's the one we're gonna be installing so let's have this little quick rerun and I went ahead this morning and I plugged in the wires for the VTAC right here 
Um, there's two of them. This one, this pigtail, this is going to go to the ECU. Then you have this one with two wires. This is your ground. This one's going to go to the ECU. Then I have my knock sensor just hanging here. Um, I did forget yesterday to tell you guys that they do sell a kit of wires that comes with all these wires that you need. It's a piggyback kit. You can find it off eBay. I will show you guys right now on my phone. So here it is. It is $32 for this kit. And this kit comes with the wiring that you would need. This is, here's the name of it, what you would have to look up. But pretty much type in D16 mini me swap and it'll give you all all the options there's different ones this one's for obd1 different pigtails that you could use so yeah if you're looking for those pigtails and you can't find them anywhere at the junkyard or anything that's where you could purchase them pretty cheap and this is all you really need um Let's have the quick little rerun. Uh, we took the wire harness a little bit apart. We did not extend any wires. I want to confirm that with you guys. We did not extend any any wires. All we did was unloom it and it was long enough to go to where we needed it. And then we did cut one wire and that was for the IAC valve in the back. And we connected our new connector to the IAC valve. I just want to be as clear as possible with this valve because I know that this is what a lot of people struggle with and if you're holding the clip with the little button at the bottom right here so if you're holding it like that with the with the clip at the bottom the bottom pin is your blue wire the top pin is your yellow wire. So I'm holding it by the little clip that you push on to disconnect it. So on the side where the little push thing is to disconnect it, that's gonna be your blue wire. And then in the back on the top, that's gonna be your yellow wire. And that's all you have to do. And just plug it in. And that right there just took care of your IAC. The next thing we want to do is we want to go inside and we are going to transfer a wire on the ECU that controls the IAC. I'm going to show you guys. First, let me get the throttle cable completely done. And then we will go ahead and go inside over there and start messing with those wires. So I have my white 8 throttle cable hooked up. I went ahead and I swapped out the little line that was here because it was a little bit uh, too loose. And I'm just using this for now. But remember, I have my charge pipe that's gonna go on that side. And then from that I have a T to my blow off valve, which I have other lines for. But I'm just gonna use this just for now. We're gonna go ahead do the thing inside for the IAC valve right now and then we're going to do the wiring for the rest of the other things the knock sensor and the VTEC we have all our plugs right here um, we are under the dash and we have two gray plugs. You're gonna wanna grab the biggest plug of both of them. You have two of them that are gray. One's a small one, and then this one's the big one. So you're gonna turn it around. And at this end, you have your IAC, your IAC wires right here. 
So here's your orange one that we trimmed when we went from three to two. And there's your blue one. So what we are gonna do, this is the middle row. So if you got the plug like this and you got the white piece right here, it is this one, this orange one. What we're gonna do is either we could either cut this orange one off, but we already did that in the engine compartment. And then the one next to it, the blue and black one, we are gonna transfer that one and plug it over here on the other side of the orange wire. So to the left of the orange wire. So we're gonna take that black and blue one that goes to the IAC, and we're gonna put it in the first spot. And in order to do that, you take this white piece, you pull it out a little bit, and then you're able to push the pin through and it'll pop out on this side and then you'll put it back in. So I went ahead and I used this ice pick and I was able to push. I lifted up this white tab. I put, I pushed down and I released the blue and black wire that's next to the orange. So now what I am gonna do is I am gonna take it and like I told you, swap it next. Swap it to the other side of the orange. Just like this and over and connect it. Push the white tab back down and it's in. And there you go. And that's all you do for the IAC. So I decided that it's easier to work out here than under the dash. So I went ahead and I pulled my harness back out a little bit. And now what we are going to be doing is we're going to be wiring the knock sensor. So the knock sensor Go. that one's gonna go in your small gray plug and if you turn the plug this way let me zoom in with the camera if you turn the plug this way like this it is going to be the middle row there's three rows the top row the middle row and the bottom row your knock sensor is gonna go in the middle row all the way to the left on the first little hole that's right there and just go ahead and pull the tab on the other side and then drop the wire in this will unlock everything all right then just drop your pin straight in there there you go it's locked in push your tab back in and your knock sensor is wired in that simple so the next one we are gonna wire in is gonna be our VTEC solenoid so I'm just gonna go ahead start sending the wire right next to the wire harness just like this. That way I could add it to the wire harness later on. All right, so the VTEC solenoid is gonna go on your big gray plug. If you're looking at the plug like this, with the clip on the top, if you're looking at the plug like this from the clip on the top, it is gonna be 
this hole right here so there is a brown wire that runs right next to this hole so it's gonna be on the top row you have your yellow your black your brown and then your VTEC so top row and if you count from the right to the left one two three four right here your fourth spot right next to the brown wire so make sure that your clip is loose and then you could go ahead and you drop this guy in there So the last one to wire in is our VTEC switch. You have two wires to this one. And you have a one's a ground and then the other one's gonna run to over here to the blue plug. So let me go ahead and plug this in right here. And what I've seen that some people do is they'll run the ground wire just up to one of these bolts right here but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my black wire to the back of the thermostat housing where that main ground is and then I'll run the other one this way the VTEC pressure switch you're gonna take the blue plug the only blue plug on here and you're gonna flip it like this like this where this plug the clip is on top and then the only little spot that is open there's three rows one is the top row two is the middle three is the bottom so you're going to go in the middle and you are going to put your little clip right in between the green and the black wire. There's an open slot right there. It's the only little open slot. So it would be, if you count from the left to the right, it would be one, two, three, four, five. That's your spot right there, the fifth spot. All right, so we are completely done with this wiring setup. The only thing that I am gonna do now is I am gonna fool the ECU into thinking that I have a crank position sensor, which I do not, because this is a D16A. So in order to do that, we are gonna be stealing the signal from the distributor. And I'm going to be using these quick splice things that I've used before. That's how I did my, my other harness, how I fooled the computer before. So we're going to be using these. This is different for an OBD2B from the OBD2A. So this is OBD2A. Therefore, we are going to take... The first wire, if you're looking at the plug like this with the clip on the top, you're gonna take your first wire, which is the one that goes to the uh, crankshaft, so this is C1, and you are gonna splice it with the yellow wire. So this is the first row on the top, the first wire that is blue and red, is blue with the red stripe, and then the fourth wire that is yellow which is the distributor we are gonna quick splice these together so i'm gonna do that right now after you splice it together you go ahead and you cut off 
the remainder of this one of the blue wire with the red stripe so you have the blue wire that comes out and then it splices into the yellow and then when it comes out again you cut it off because you don't need to send signal that way anymore because now we're sealing the signal from the yellow wire the last thing that you have to do is you have to take your C11 which is right underneath the blue wire with the red stripe right underneath so in the middle row you got the white wire with the red stripe and then you're gonna count over one two three four spots to a black wire with a little bit of a gray dot every now and then and you're gonna splice both of these together so the first one from the middle from the middle row and then the fourth one from the middle row both of those are gonna be spliced together and after we splice them we are gonna cut the white one the remainder off which I will show you guys right now so there you go I went ahead and I cut the remainder from the first wire the white wire with the red stripe off and now we are receiving the signal from only the black wire and then I went ahead and I put this on here to protect those wires and my wire harness is completely done we have reached the end of the video um, if you have any questions or anything about the wiring you can go down below and leave a comment and I will definitely reply to you guys I hope this video has been very helpful and you guys are able to do this at home and I'm pretty much ready to plug my ECU and I am very close to getting this car started so if you have not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe so you can follow me follow the sleeper civic build and I will catch you guys on my next video till then peace out stay safe catch you guys later Bye, bye.